Randomized controlled trials are often used to test new drugs or medical treatments. The key feature is that the drug or medical treatment is randomized. Another example of a randomized controlled trial would be a study comparing two different treatments for asthma. Subjects would be randomized to one of the two asthma treatments. Also, the intervention group and the control group should be comparable in all aspects except the intervention itself. For example, the proportion female and the age distribution would be very similar in both the intervention and the control groups. Randomization provides the strongest evidence for causal inference. Randomization basically allows us to say, if everything else is the same, what is the effect of just the exposure on the outcome? For example, if assignment of a treatment was not random, then researchers may, might select which patients got which treatment based on patient characteristics such as severity of illness. This could bias the study results. When randomization is done, a computer or some other method is used to assign groups to receive one exposure or treatment or another. Randomization is done by chance and helps to reduce or prevent bias in a study. It is the most important component of the experimental study design. Now let's look at an example of a randomized control trial. Researchers designed a randomized control trial to answer the research question, do U.S. Postal Service mailmen who receive a specific sun safety education intervention subsequently wear wide-brimmed hats and use sunscreen more than U.S. Postal Service mailmen who did not receive the sun safety education intervention. The intervention included six educational sessions, wide-brimmed hats, sunscreen, and reminders. Workers were randomized to sun safety promotion or delayed sun safety promotion education. Postal workers in the intervention group were provided with wide-brimmed hats, sunscreen reminders, and six educational sessions. The postmen were then followed for two years to assess the outcome. The researchers found that the postmen receiving the intervention had increased use of sunscreens and hats compared with the control group. Okay, now let's talk about the key advantages to performing randomized control trials. First, Randomization reduces the influence of other determinants of exposure and outcomes, i.e. confounding. This study design provides strong evidence for causality or causal inference. Since investigators assign the exposure or medical treatment, the time or temporal relationship between exposure and outcome is clear. So while there are advantages to randomized control trials, it is important to note that there are also disadvantages. Randomized control trials can be costly, Sometimes RCTs, or randomized controls trials, have issues with external validity or generalizability. People who participate in RCTs may be very different from the rest of the population. Thus, the effects seen in the participants may not be generalizable to the population at large. Randomized control trials usually focus on a specific, narrow research question related to a certain treatment or medication and a specific comparison with another treatment or exposure. In addition, there are ethical considerations when randomizing treatments or exposures. For example, it would be unethical to randomize people to be exposed to a known toxic substance, such as water containing high levels of arsenic, mercury, or lead. So to review, in the randomized control trial, researchers will follow the treatment and the comparison group to see who develops the health outcome or disease of interest. Now we will go on to discuss another type of experimental study design known as the crossover clinical trial in more depth. In a clinical crossover study design, subjects switch from one treatment to another after a certain period of time. They cross over to the other treatment or exposure. As we don't want the effect of the first treatment to carry over when a person switches to another treatment, there is usually a period in between the two exposures called a washout period when no treatment or exposure is given. The order that the exposure or treatment would be given is randomized, but the same participants are involved in each part of the trial. Note that if a person changes in some meaningful way over time, for example, if a woman were to get pregnant during the study, this may affect the study results. For this reason, shorter intervention effects are preferred for studies in crossover clinical trials.
Let's look now at an example of a crossover clinical trial. In this study, researchers wanted to compare the effect aged garlic has on blood lipids. Study participants were men ages 32 to 68 with moderately high cholesterol. The men in the study were randomized to take a dietary supplement containing either garlic or a placebo for a six-month period. Blood tests were recorded, then each participant switched to the other supplement for a time, after which blood tests were recorded again. The test results show that garlic supplements appeared to reduce cholesterol as well as blood pressure. 